Well, hello everyone and thanks for watching THV 11 News at noon. I'm Amanda Yeager. Let's start the second half of your Thursday with a first look at your weather forecast. We have meteorologist Nathan Scott joining us. I love that the sun decided to make an appearance today, Nathan. Finally, Amanda, we're seeing lots of sun across the state. It's going to be a gorgeous Thursday afternoon to get outside and enjoy this really nice weather this morning. We had a lot of clouds in place, so we didn't drop down as low as what we were expecting in many locations. We stayed above the 50 degree mark in Little Rock, but where the clouds did clear out, you started the day in the 40s. Conway, Searcy, look at Clinton. You woke up with a temperature of 39 degrees, but the temperatures have rebounded all thanks to wall to wall sunshine across the state, although just a few clouds in Northwest Arkansas temperatures already into the mid to upper 60s. We'll continue to climb up into the low to mid 70s this afternoon with plenty of sun and tonight will cool things back down. Clear skies and the winds will be light to calm. This will be the last cool morning though because the mornings ahead look at that warm up along with the warmer temperatures. The chance of showers and storms will be going up next week and also a lot more humidity. So enjoy this nice weather while it lasts because it's not going to be around for very long. More on that coming up. The Interstate 40 bridge over the Mississippi River remains shut down this afternoon. This is the bridge between Memphis and West Memphis. It's the main connection for Arkansas and Tennessee. The closure was started after a fracture was found on the bridge. Really looks like a break. More than 12,000 trucks use that bridge every day, and that means this shutdown could cause even more shortages and delays. As far as a timetable goes, officials don't really know, saying that it could take days, weeks, possibly months to get it fixed. Now, late last night, the Arkansas Department of Transportation tweeted that crews are inspecting the I-55 bridge near Memphis. This is the backup route drivers are being directed to. That bridge is 71 years old. The closed I-40 bridge is 49 years old. And again, this detour is expected to be in place for months as major repairs are made. After a six day disruption from a cyber attack, fuel is flowing again through the Colonial Pipeline, but it could take several days before supplies return to normal. Elise Preston has the latest from New York. Drivers are still lining up to get gas in parts of the Southeast, even though the Colonial Pipeline is now open again. We just now got a delivery. We got 4,000 gallons and it'll be gone in about an hour. Some people waited hours to fill up trying to just get some before I run out of gas so I can get come to work. The main fuel pipeline for the East Coast was reopened Wednesday night, but company officials say it could take a few days before supplies return to normal. According to Gas Buddy, North Carolina is getting hit hardest, with 74% of its stations facing outages. Half of the stations are out in Georgia, and it's even higher in South Carolina and Virginia. The six day disruption created higher demand and pushed up prices across the country, with many people rushing out to top off their tanks. There is fuel available. It's just when everybody's buying it at the same time due to hysteria, then uh, it creates gaps in the supply chain, and that's just what we're seeing here. Colonial has declined to say whether it paid a ransom to the Russian hackers who crippled their computer systems. In a statement, the company said safety was its primary focus and that it would conduct a comprehensive series of pipeline safety assessments. Elise Preston, CBS News, New York. President Biden has signed an executive order months in the making, making to strengthen the country's cybersecurity defenses. Meanwhile, here in Arkansas, Governor Asa Hutchinson responded to the gas shortages. He said reports from the state's fuel supply show there's not a shortage here. Our gas supply remains stable. He encouraged people to stop panic buying because that can just lead to another shortage here. And also, you just got to be considerate of others. This is one more giant step on our fight against the pandemic. Well, it's now official. The CDC recommends the Pfizer vaccine for children 12 to 15 years old. And by opening up the recommendation to kids 12 and up, that means 17 million Americans are now eligible to be vaccinated. And this afternoon, the American Academy of Pediatrics is suggesting all children 12 and older get those shots as soon as possible. One reason, according to the CDC, children 17 and younger made up 18% of the nation's COVID cases in April. 
And if you are looking to get your child vaccinated, there are multiple options already available in Arkansas. Starting today, UAMS will be holding daily vaccine clinics dedicated to getting kids 12 and up vaccinated. The vaccine clinics will be at the center at University Park on West 12th Street, and they will be open from 730 in the morning until 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. And they'll also be open on Saturday from 10 to 2. There's no out of pocket cost. It's totally free. You're only asked to bring a valid ID and insurance cards if you have them. A parent or guardian should come to the vaccination appointment with patients under 18. Meanwhile, CVS Pharmacy also opening up appointments for the Pfizer vaccine for that 12 and up age group nationwide, including here in Arkansas. And you can schedule an appointment online at CVS.com or through the CVS Pharmacy app. However, they say walk-ins are welcome as long as they have the doses available. And the same thing goes for many of the other local pharmacies right here in Arkansas. Pfizer says the vaccine is 100% effective in this age group and the dosing is the same as what's given to older Americans. So pharmacies and providers can use the vaccine supply that they already have in stock. Now, one important thing to note though, legal guardian consent is required and children must be accompanied by an adult. The worst fighting in years between Israelis and Palestinians is not letting up. At least 83 Palestinians and seven Israelis have died, and the conflict is threatening to engulf new territory. CBS's Ian Lee reports from London. Another night of terror for people in both Israel and Gaza. Palestinian militants continue to fire hundreds of rockets. Home surveillance video shows one striking this man's kitchen, another slamming into an apartment building, killing a five-year-old Israeli boy. There was a big bomb. It was very, very uh, frightening. Israeli bombs are leveling their targets, like the 14-story El Sharuk Tower in Gaza City. We were on the first floor, says Khaled al Mafur, when a bomb destroyed our house. The air war has killed dozens of Palestinians and at least seven Israelis. But the conflict is different this time. It isn't just centered around Gaza. The fighting has spread to cities where Arabs and Jews live side by side. South of Tel Aviv, Jewish rioters attacked an Arab driver. While 10 miles east, this man says dozens of Arabs attacked him when they discovered he was Jewish. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu condemned the anarchy, saying nothing can justify Jews lynching Arabs or Arabs lynching Jews. And while Israel's military trades blows with Gaza militants, it's the widespread violence that worries leaders and threatens to open a dangerous new chapter in the decades-old conflict. Ian Lee, CBS News. Now, there is one place of calm in the region. At Jerusalem's mosque, thousands of Muslims prayed and celebrated Ahid, the end of the month of Ramadan. A pastor in Virginia turned one stolen bike into hundreds, and it's all a part of an effort to help his community. We'll share that story. And look at all that blue sky from Dash R View 11. We're going to hang on to abundant sunshine throughout our Thursday. Going to the weekend, though, there are some changes to talk about. More on that next.